I think I've seen this guy before. Oh, it's the green giant! I was hoping he'd be bigger. The Seeker's an interesting case. Originally, this specific character was a nameless Decepticon who took part in an ability to basically fry Autobots with devastating acid rain, thus his name. Fans were intrigued by this concept and the specialized squad called Rainmakers became an obscure favorite. It wasn't until 2008's Universe Classics when the green Acid Storm got his official toy out of nowhere. Since then, Acid Storm came from one episode of Generation 1 to getting a bigger role as a gender competitor Confused Seeker in Cyberverse. Seriously, he's portrayed as female and male in different episodes. Just pick. In Generation, Starscream released and we knew we would get a repaint, but for Acid Storm to beat Thundercracker and Skywarp was impressive. But how did the toy do? Before we take a look at Acid Storm, early Legends figures include these half target, half micromasters. Acid Storm is packed with Venom, a somewhat new character. You see, the Starscream came with Waspinator. Originally, the follow up repaint was going to be Thundercracker cracker and was planned to include Venom based on an original Insecticon. But in the change of plans and probably copyright issues, Venom was born. First of all, ew, bug. Second, as a little figure, Venom is a bit of a looker. I like how the decos countered from the Wasp, with the green and purple swapped. However, the feel of this figure should be taken as a delicate Fabrice egg. Bug mode is the most dirty with the head holding it in place, but I still don't feel comfortable with messing with it. It's got a peg on the back so you can plug it into the hand of some toys and what kind of Twilight Zone shit is this? Does he swat bugs with it? The legs can move, physically speaking, but each joint is connected by another leg, so it's best to, well, try to line them up, and by try, I mean I hate these rubbery little- it's fine. In robot mode, you can definitely see the Waspinator in this, but with the black head, it kind of gives him his own personal vibe. It has a surprising amount of movement, individual arms, legs are combined, but they do move, and the backpack can fuck itself. This junk really doesn't like to stay. I wish there was a tab to keep it together. Whenever I pick it up, I have to fix it. I guess it could be a flying effect, but it's lame. You could give him the secret null race on the smaller peg. Doesn't really stand, but if you can manage the Rambo mode, fold down the peg, bring together the back wings and the barrel will extend to become a gun. You can see the robot from the bottom and the legs are gross, but the execution is better than some of the other figures. Basic, but as a bonus, I can't really complain. Acid Storm transforms into a bright green jet similar in design to the IDW concept. The color might not be for everyone given how vibrant it is, but for me, I wish I could make love to colors. Such a beautiful, eye-catching color that's perfect for the original cartoon, who retained mostly green in the color scheme, but they threw in a taste of silver, white, and purple with two standout Decepticon symbols. And they didn't just trace around with white, that Decepticon logo has a slightly darker tone. I mean, I guess extra points, but we didn't offer extra credit. There's a burnt orange cockpit, but without a trace of color, it just looks like a baby diarrhea smudge. <sighs> Landing gear on the front and two at the knees. While the back is stationary, the one in the front does fold up. But if you don't hold the rubber cockpit, you'll get into some issues. But I'm glad to say the Snoop droops. And when he pours acid rain on his foes, he could witness it as it unfolds. At night, all he could hear is the scream. <laughs> Unless he's Pyro from TF2. I could be wrong here, but the shape almost feels like the classic style jet, but with the proportions of the F-22 model used for Starscream in the film. Anyone else get that? I don't know why I'm waiting for an answer on the pre-recorded video. You can plug a weapon on top, including Venom himself. But you also get two null rays that attach to the sides. Plugs right in, and you don't need to remove it for the transformation. Little easy to knock it out of place, but easy to readjust. Besides, without it, it just feels... Naked. The Almo will bring you back to the classic episode, more so the very scene he was introduced. The excellent shape and bright color of green pops, making this very appealing. Robot mode. Storm is so simple to transform, I'm sure the chubby kid from Monster House can figure it out. But the robot mode is actually more satisfying than some larger seeker molds. 
Have I mentioned Power of the Prime Starscream is pure puke? Robot mode brings in more silver and black, but the green remains prominent. Now that is one spicy Italian specially prepared Amita ball. One thing that's disappointing is the head. The paint is a little messy, it gets the point across, and the sculpt has all the features of a seeker, but with the pin shoved right in there, there's no head articulation. Given the size, it's not a big problem, just a burden of how it's developed. Do you know what acid rain does to robots? Are you proud? yourself don't look at me with those mm, eyes that make me feel good did someone say articulation ball jointed shoulders ball joint elbows ball joint hips knee joint and a joint in the heels and toes if there's another thing i have to really complain about is that there's no tab to keep the wings from flopping like a big salami it's not really loose and can't get out of the way of the arms i just wish there was a tab to help it these smaller wings fold up to clean the legs but you can also open them up and he can assert dominance and intimidate snakes and wait night in Jurassic Park. Weapons include two null rays in black that you can add to the shoulders, or you can remove it, plug it into the hand, and now you have pissed me off. The fact that you can do this, poof, despicable. I will take my ignorance elsewhere. If you move the arms, chances are you'll have to rework the null rays in place. But hey, be patient. Some men need a little work. At least it's on the upper arms this time. Mm, makes me a giddy little boy, but even better is that he actually uses the cockpit as the chest. I swear these larger figures are trying to prank me. You don't need Venom as a gun. He's got weapons to work with, but you know, I'm not complaining. Uh, oh no. What if he sprays acid venom? Uh, is, is that toxic masculine something or other? I have a soft spot for Acid Storm. Character-wise in the show, there's not much to it, but he is incredibly obscure with an interesting ability, and to top it off, this is my favorite color. I feel this one's gonna be harder to grab, and his short size is not for everyone, but there's no harm in it. Seems to be a basic toy, but compared to some of the other Seeker molds, it's impressive, not to mention the brighter colors makes him a standout. Plus, I could do green screen, look! We're back at the dinosaur era! Amazing! Yo, people who hate the Transformers films give Michael Bay a lot of flick. I mean, yeah, The Last Night is a garbage film, but there's some stuff that I can find that I appreciate. You got some little girl in there for like 10 minutes not doing much, but you know, girl power. A romantic girl that's not just delicious string cheese, perhaps? I say perhaps because we're still trying to figure that out. Characters like Cogman and Anthony Hopkins body who's been taken over by a child's mind. I guess Bay really did learn his lesson after all these years. What's that? A transformer that speaks with a French accent but isn't actually French? <laughs> this character had a pretty rough release. Hot Rod was the only The Last Night deluxe figure to be part of the Walmart exclusive Autobots Unite sub theme. Some areas got it, but in my area, I think we had for about a month before it was lost to myth. In The Last Night, Hot Rod was apparently listed as Bumblebee's brother in arms. And just like him, he eventually became the guardian of a human character, Vivian. He also, for some reason, had a French accent, because of course. What? Are you telling me the Bumblebee film totally removed the scene from canon where Hot Rod blows up a bunch of Nazis? Well, good. We don't have to remember that. We don't have to talk about that ever again. Fuck Studio Series! Hot Rod did also feature packaging art for both the exclusive line and sneaked in a regular Premiere Edition package. With that, how's the toy? Hot Rod is an extensive remold of the Age of Extinction Lockdown, who transformed into a different model of Lamborghini. Instead of just tweaking it and keeping the open gap, Hot Rod shell is completely redone to fit the mold of the Lamborghini Centenario. Continario, whatever you pronounce it your way. Instead of the crappy colors, Hot Rod feels very consistent, mostly black with transparent clear plastic right down to the headlights that blend into the hood. If you're missing that G1 flare, at least it does have a red trim at the bottom, and another above the window, which is hard to make out but appreciated. Actually, the molding in general is a huge improvement. Check out the hood itself, so much work that settles into a clean shape. Lamborghini logo on the front, which is somehow easier to make out than the masterpiece. Jeez, step up your game. Worst toy, I'll buy a bunch. Painted rims and while the back has no paint, the extensive molded detail still pops, but uh, where's the giant ridiculous spoiler? Is this it? Is this even Hot Rod? Is this even Blitzwing? Mmm, those silver Autobot logos on the dark canvas. Oh, just all the joy. No way to port the weapons, but uh, 
that might not be a problem in perspective. I know some people have issues tabbing in the wheel wells, but mine manages just fine. If you tab everything together, it should function as a regular individual in society. I mean, automobile. Listen, this isn't the G1 alt mode, but that was also a crazy car from the future. Honestly, looking back, I can kind of see the squarish Lambo aesthetic, but that might just be me and how surprisingly stupid I am. Because, you know, if you disagree with me, I'm an idiot, right? Am I salty today? <laughs> I would prefer it as red for nostalgia purposes, but I'll take how it is. The coloring totally works for the car, and I think the toy makes it work. Robot mode. Howard's design is interesting to say the least, with the giant shoulder pads and the head sculpt, I'm not sure what they're going for exactly. Oh ho, French wee wee baguette! Let's get the elephant out of the room. There was some argument before release whether or not this was a remold of Lockdown. I mean, from a glance you can see the resemblance, but there's a lot that's changed. Arms are almost completely new, and the way they built the body that compresses into itself on the front, extending both parts to fit the alt mode while keeping the general transformation process, allows him to be much taller than the undersized predecessor. Unlike Lockdown, Hot Rod decided to put a butt plate on himself. Good! Now you can stop shoving soda balls. I'm gonna stop right there! Other improvements include not being absolute shit. Don't let this fool you, it is an extreme remold. While most of the body is changed, the interior joints return. Examples include the little joint in the elbow, the piece attached to the shoulder pad, shoulder ball joint, assembly holding the neck and back and front of the torso, hip joints, and even the entire lower legs and feet, despite the fact he doesn't actually have toes. And it's disgusting, it's like giving Sonic thighs. The the head. Oh, the head. It's the ugliest fucking head I've ever seen on a Transformer toy. Not because it's messy, busy, or clunky, but it's fucking ugly. At least it's painted well, but the eyes and mouth looks like a blobfish. Have I been gnomed? To its credit, it's got a beret. I think it's got a visor installed. Watch out for these things on the back. I'm noticing stress marks, but you know, <laughs> this thing is in constant pain. Did someone say, are together shit? Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, hips out and in for in the back, rotation below, knee bend, and foot moves. He's got joints all around, however, there's a limitation to it. While the arms have a good built flow, the elbow doesn't really get a good bend depending on where you line it. Also, his legs look way too thin for his upper torso, making a lot of poses feel awkward. While I'm sure it gets better with accessories, he's got no accessories. For the love of baguette! Reportedly, a prototype tested that it would have come with the remold of Lockdown's weapon, but the final release missed out. It's really disappointing because with the figure like this, he's desperately missing something to fight with. You could probably give him a spare weapon, maybe siege fire drive, or do what I did and custom build a STOP THE TIME gun. I did this out of cardboard and don't bother asking for a tutorial. I will give it credit, the design, aside from the garbage face that'll take a little more than proactive to fix, and the paint job is pretty well done. The silver on top of the borderline black is nice, and the red acts as a bonus. He doesn't stand out on display, but I feel like an effort was made. Hot Rod is a vast improvement compared to the lockdown, but that doesn't really make him a great figure. There's points to appreciate, but it doesn't save it from being overall a little bland and underwhelming. There is a a couple of third-party figures that seem to do wonders, but this is a more simpler figure among a major toy line. It's not going to be perfect. Funny enough, when I thought about the design before a toy was announced, I was worried it was going to be a straight-up reissue from Lockdown with a new head. I'm glad they put a little more effort than expected into this figure. A little disappointing, but if you like the look and can see past some of the issues like the ugly face, I'd say just don't buy it from a scalper. Did you know that in the French version of the film, Hot Rod speaks with an Italian accent? Get the Bowser! Oh, French, wee oui, wee, oui, baguette! was not a good film, but to its credit, the previous design for Bumblebee was not pleasant. I mean, the toy is fine, but the CGI render is just... 
Yeah, so I'm glad that they went back to a more classic design. Oh, what's that? You repainted the Age of Extinction Bumblebee that doesn't even look like the right design for the Last Night toy line? That's some tasty bullshit right there. Took you two weeks, but you got it right. Crankcase, anyone? Do we need to introduce this guy? We all know who he is. It was surprising to see Bumblebee in the first wave receiving the repaint treatment with a wrong design. I guess it's true. It's all about the money. Only took them two waves later to bring us a proper Bumblebee. Now you have something to take on promotion bait. I mean Nemesis Prime. With his newly redesigned alt mode and proper sculpt, how is the toy? In alt mode, Bumblebee transforms into a 2017 Chevrolet Camaro concept. I just want to make a point. It's a hassle trying to tab things in. These back windows have to line up properly. There's tabs on the back windows that tab into the foot. The front window needs to sneak into some pegs. Just... Even when you try to get everything together, I'm sure something will go wrong. These sides with the wheels don't like to stay in place on one side. But is the result of the car worth it? Maybe if you look at it from far away. I don't mind the shifting color from molded to painted yellow, but the black deco that suddenly stops is a bit distracting. But the biggest offense is the panel lines that break up the front, leaking yellow plastic cracks. Complaints aside, there is something to admire with its overall design and what they were going for. The spoiler, hood, front, and back has this slick look that sneaks an aggressive tone that makes it more unique. Instead of two black stripes, he just has one large one. You do get a Chevy logo blue headlights, but they're pretty hard to see, and oddly enough, paint on the back. You know what, it kind of looks like a kitty cat. Very angry one. <laughs> also, I love Camaro, so I'm clearly a biased YouTuber. Probably best you unsub right now. I'm exposing myself for you. Personally, I would like painted rims, but this is actually accurate to the film. You went this round, Hasbro. <laughs> you can also take the gun and plug it onto the side of the car. I guess you can somewhat imitate the scene where he drives down and shoots Barricade, but then I'm reminded that they brought back these two and barely do anything with it. <laughs> Too bad you can't store it anywhere else other than the sides. Or you could <laughs> throw it away. Clear windows, which could be distracting with the kibble behind it, but there's really not much thanks to the fact that it's not pressed against it like a robot just exploded inside the vehicle. It's certainly not perfect, but I do have an appreciation for it. It's a little more aggressive and different compared to other Camaros. So if you like it and aren't too picky, this might be fine. Robot mode. Robot mode returns to a traditional aesthetic but feels oddly deformed. It's just how the toy is designed, but his chest looks incredibly wide, stomach is thin, and those, oh, those long legs and thick thighs, my pants have shrunk in size. Oh, these are my pants. I mean, it does look pretty weird, but still fits the realm of Bumblebee. Maybe I'm being more lenient on it? Or maybe it's about time we realize that Bumblebees come in different body shapes. The head sculpt looks like Bumblebee in concept, but just feels uncomfortable. The mouth feels stretched and the eyes... I don't like this. Did someone say, ARTICULATION? Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, waist rotates, ball joint hips, rotation below, knee bend, and foot moves. For a bumble chungus, he actually poses pretty well. Just make sure the feet tap in properly. I heard that there's a common issue, but mine seems to be okay. I just gotta watch out for the crack on the hinge that's, uh... Uh, should I even joke about it? Let's take a look at the weapon. You can dislocate the arm from the mushroom peg, which, eh, the stress of it, and replace it with this traditional cannon. It's supposed to only attach to this one side for elbow motion, but if you don't care, you can switch it. You can do this with the cannon too, but for storage, you can shove the arm on his butt. If it could only stay in place, one slip and it's spillage on aisle, oopsie. I do like how the back of the car fills the side of the leg, but sadly it leaves the other side hollow. And while it seems boxy and wide, from the back of the robot, the entire top folds in to make a somewhat clean design. Studio series Bumblebee movie Bumblebee attempted this, but completely fails trying to jam everything in. This Bumblebee flows a lot better. It's almost like this one released after tweaking some of the issues. His chest doesn't snap into place and messing with the toy, you can accidentally fold them out 
of place. But hey, at least you got Teddy movement. Bumblebee is not a complete disaster, but there's some clear problems with the mold. The alt mode has gaps that ruin the car, and the robot has a lumpy look to it. These are just a few nitpicks among a decent list, but if you can get behind all that, I'd say this mold might be something to look into. Not perfect, but out of the three molds released within a year of each other, this might be the best option. Now assert your dominance on the Nemesis Prime and save us from terrible films! to review some fast food toys probably didn't even think about it well shove this in your face in promotion for the robots in disguise show mcdonald's had a few rounds of transformers toys in 2016 the second wave featured robot and alt mode plastic figures with simple little gimmicks this is the robot style optimus prime is it weird i still have the packaging mostly clear with black writing nothing to really talk about also still have the instructions and game app that does anyone use these the figure itself is based on the animation character but not just that look deep enough and you'll see that it's directly designed off the warrior class toy i don't know if this is cheap design but it's a freaking mcdonald's toy i don't see the point in complaining i actually find it fascinating to see all the joints kibble and Giant cannon retained. Oh wait, he didn't have the cannon. Head super small and the ears feel reduced, but totally has the animation look with the odd stretched face mask and huge neck. Did someone say, articulation? Head rotates, shoulders forward and back, and waist rotates. There's more paint than needed. All the black windows, Autobot symbol, it's surprising. He's also covered in 5mm ports so he can attach a ton of weapons. I wish more McDonald's figures did this. I should get Cog and see what we could play with. He does come with an oversized missile that can be fired using the button on the top. Works surprisingly well. I mean, it's got Slipstream's face on it, and why does it have Slipstream on it? What an odd design choice. I guess Minicons was a big deal, so... Nah, this is just weird. It's got a peg you can attach for storage. Doesn't make it any less weird, does it? It's just a simple little McDonald's figure. Not really gonna be the highlight, but the fact it is based on the Warrior figure and that there's more paint than needed makes it alright. Nothing missed out, but if you find it for cheap, there really is no harm. But... What's with the face? If you ever make my little warpath uncomfortable in any way, I will destroy everything that you love. Everything that you hope for will be a despair, a void of nothingness. Or maybe I'll just write a strongly worded message on social media, maybe that one. Warpath is a war crazy, pow blasting, kapow shooting darling. My god, I love this minibot so damn much, it's just... It's so beautiful! If you don't understand or appreciate him, you're completely uncultured. You have a chance to make up for what you brought since Warpath is getting a reissue. So with that, how's the toy? Warpath transforms into a tiny little tank. Colors in pearl gray and maroon. Such a small thing, but man, what a kablam! Zowie! Larvini! It brings to the table. I'm so satisfied with the rectangular shape, with barely any panel lines that cut off the cohesive detail. If anything, it only adds to the proper style. Flashy silver treads with multiple wheels inside, giving a consistent design, but nothing here actually rolls. There's two wheels on the front, and one little wheel in the back that doesn't really do much. I don't doubt the firepower when saying this is an adorable little turret. Love the detail, spins completely around, and the section that looks like a secondary canopy, that's where his head is. So you can totally have fun with this. There is a little rub sticker on the front, but after so long, it doesn't really do much. If you're wondering what side he's on, I don't think it matters. We love him as is. Amazing little desk toy, clean enough to even deceive co-workers. Warpath is such a small tank, but that's what makes him so enjoyable. Cute, Charming and powerful. Robot mode. <laughs> we 
Warpath is certainly in his awkward years by this point. You can't bring the arms down flat without pushing against the turret, and the chest feels off from everything else. But you know what? He's a basic toy, and it's gonna take a lot more than that for me to dislike him. That face is so simple and round, but how can you stay mad at the vents on the face mask and deep black eyes? I'm hoping that's my own crap in my pants. Did someone say articulation? Thanks to the turret, he can look side to side, arms move, and if you want, the feet can move, though they can flop. I'm not turtly enough, so I'm gonna go in my shell. Articulation is lacking, but the charm comes from what they've done with how simple it is. And I think they made a fun little piece. At least he's got physical hands molded in, and the treads on his feet? You see him rolling, are you jealous? And how can we look past the turret in his chest, one of the most iconic parts that makes Warpath who he is. Not that he's had it in every figure, but when you see this, you know exactly who's blind in the round. Why this isn't in a Michael Bay film is absolutely confusing. It represents all of the films without the garbage, and it's not even in the movies! Just a game nobody seems to care about. If you don't get it, that's fine, but he's just so charming that I have to appreciate it. This is a new kind of class that needs to be displayed. If you can't get the original, try and get the reissue. I don't think you'll regret it. This is a fun little toy and deserves the love. Kabow! Bow! Shazam! Uh oh.